happy wednesday welcome to the conscious tea the conscious kitchen live is now called the conscious tea and it's every wednesday at 11 a.m today we're talking health and wellness i'm going to be telling you guys about my journey to vegetarianism and laura will be telling you guys about how she's healing her psoriasis through food so let's give her a little call in here calling laura fama hi everyone thanks so much for joining oh this is episode three and laura's coming in soon hello hey laura hey guys what's up earrings cute <laughs> like little lipsticks <laughs> yeah how's it going thank you guys for joining us yeah or you know we're trying to get used to this new you know format that we're doing we're trying to get everyone to join us for the conscious tea um different subjects uh different topics different tips to li have you live a better life <laughs> yeah we'll be talking about it all conscious consumption conscious marketing podcasting today about health and wellness eat like you give a damn laura and i have an extensive just knowledge on what works for us and all and our bodies and we just want to share that with you so hopefully inspire you to figure out what diet and what type of like living lifestyle works for you yeah yeah. Hey, I'm casually. What's up, girl? We miss you. Um, yeah. So um, thank you guys for joining us. I know it's really hard to stay on people's lives. So we're going to just try to get as much information out to you as possible. <laughs> so grab some tea, grab some coffee and join in. Yeah. So Laura, tell us, tell us why, why we're even talking about health today. Um, I think right now is a great time because I think people are learning a lot right now and trying to live a better life and trying to stay healthy and, and then also just trying to stay on top of not getting sick, right? Because our immunity needs to be 100% so we don't catch COVID or any type of virus or even catch the flu or cold and then a potentially get another sickness. So I think it's a great time to talk about food. I mean, who doesn't love to eat? So true, so true and you know health is really wealth and the concept of health is wealth and what you eat is what you are because it's like you know down the line when we're older if we weren't eating the right foods throughout our entire youth like we're we're our health will be different and we will suffer for that so we want to just dive into like telling you guys what when what our epiphanies were for our health and how we eat really to to, to help like ourselves laura has like a chronic illness called psoriasis and she just is going to tell you guys how that works for her and and yeah awesome yeah so um i guess yeah we'll be talking about vegan diet i'm not a vegan i'm a pescatarian but i mean i do eat a lot of plant-based foods today i had some seitan which is I, I guess it's gluten it's gluten it's not soy so it's processed type of fake meat so i got to eat some seitan today and um, I had a vegetable uh, albondiga, which is kind of like, <laughs> um, which is, 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 like a, is like a meatball, a vegetarian meatball here. So I had that and I made some butternut squash soup, roasted that in the, in the oven and made and blended it in my, in my blender and had that for lunch today. So yeah, shout out to the psoriasis uh, people on here. Thanks for joining us, guys. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be talking about my chronic illness, having psoriasis. Um, I pretty much have had it since for my whole life, 16 plus years, just dealing with that. And, 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 and I kind of discovered like really diving into to my chronic illness four years ago. Um, you know, when I was kind of, you know, like kind of easing out of my business and, and really realizing like, okay, I've lived with this chronic issue. I have all these gut problems. Like, you know, I was getting all these flares on my scalp and, and and constant scratching at my scalp like i just had all these things and i was like okay i really need to like stop and like really focus all my energy on like healing this chronic illness that i'll live with forever in a 360 notion right so you know i went to all these holistic places i went to like chinese medicine i had acupuncture uh, all the herbal teas to even going to just like the regular doctor and trying all these um you know, these trying these all these type of ointments and nothing really worked. Um, you know, so it really is just about diet, you know, having making sure that you're eating a lot of leafy greens, you know, not so much milk and dairy intake, 
and trying to, you know, ease off of caffeine, anything to create that inflammation in your body, you know, that things that activate and stimulate, you know, which is, you know, you know, high caffeinated teas, coffees, um, spicy food, you know, nightshade vegetables, which are like eggplants and, um, you know, starchy things like potatoes and things like that, you know, just more healthier leafy green, leafy food, things are high in omega threes, like, you know, um, wild caught fish, stuff like that. So I started, I started understanding that that I need to really, really take care of my diet, you know, but I'm not perfect. I still eat some some things here and there when I'm feeling, you know, a bit crazy. But yeah, it's just starting from there, you know, and then kind of that's what helped me with my yeah, yeah. With your psoriasis, can, for people that don't know what psoriasis is, can you tell us exactly what psoriasis is and how it affects your autoimmune system? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it affects me more than I mean, so basically, it's a lifelong condition that has I have these like little spores here on my elbow, I'll show you guys. It's like these really crazy like spores. And I have them like in my scalp, I even have it in my like some private areas. And and it crazy, it's crazy. It's basically a, a, a huge chronic issue where your skin produces so so much cellular turnover in your skin because you naturally have a turnover in your skin like daily, but this is like happening, happening excessively quick. So mm -hmm. even if you get a scab, a scab will take maybe three days. Like I create scabs pretty much on my skin, like in like milliseconds. So okay. it's, it's a, it's a, it's like a rapid growth and it has to deal with, um, you know, problems in my, you know, could be DNA, could be her like hereditary. Also it's, it is mostly, mostly in your gut. Mm -hmm. So if your gut isn't protected, if your gut is not absorbing the right, not the right nutrition, that's how you have leaky gut. And a lot of people have that. It's not just psoriasis. It's also like chronic issues, like people that have, you know, chronic um, fatigue, you know, mm -hmm. people that have eczema. Um, there's so many different types of chronic issues that people deal with that is uncurable. So yeah, it's a skin, skin disorder. So it's really like mitigating like the, the days and like the good days and the bad days. And when did you realize that food was super tied to sort to your psoriasis and like that it caused inflammations um i think like when i was drinking like even my early 20s you know i was like when i was heavily drinking alcohol and like taking shots of vodka and then my flares would get really get worsen you know my flares would just get i would start itching and i would have headaches and and things like that and so when i started easing off alcohol and i started easing off you know caffeine i wouldn't scratch so much I wouldn't like, you know, my gut wouldn't be burning. I wouldn't have these crazy burning sensations and stuff, you know, but, and then when I started incorporating having more of the vegetable plant-based diet or like with soups and herbal teas, like I didn't have that burning sensation in my stomach anymore. And can, yeah. and what are some of those things that do, so you said caffeine and like alcohol. Also, I remember like when we, when we were living together, you were avoiding tomatoes and like various like acidic foods as well. Yeah, acidic fruits, citrus foods, those are all kind of things that activate the, the gut because the act, because it also correlates with the, the natural acidity that is already naturally in your stomach that breaks down the food, right? Because your, your stomach, it doesn't just break down and with through your, your you know, digestive system, there are those acids, you know, the acids that are naturally in your stomach. So the acidity in tomatoes, the acidity, the citrus in, in fruit and stuff, it's okay to have it once in a while, but you know, like every other day, it's not good for people with psoriasis, right? That people that don't have a strong gut lining. And so you said that you're, you feel like you're constantly like in a tug of war with food and like in, in the food that you eat. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, like look in, in the pandemic, I really realized like, you know, if I'm not take if I'm not nourishing myself correctly with the right food, it automatically like already messes with my mental health you know I feel lethargic I feel like depressed I feel like a huge cloud over my head because I'm not getting the right nutrients I need from you know the right diet whether it's like my omegas in my oils um you know if I'm not drinking enough water like it's like I realize like my job away from my you know my regular nine to five job in that I have personally I really eating correctly is it's a job within itself like, I really have to pay attention, you know, to drink enough water, to drink my herbal teas, you know. Yeah, right. To eat enough food that have the right um, alkaline, you know. Thanks for pointing that out, babe. Yeah, it's all, it's all correlated. It's all tied in, you know. And so tell us, like, what, what is your, what's, like, your day-to-day, -day, like, meal like? Do you, 
what do you have for breakfast? You juice from in the morning. Say it again. Oh, you you do like juicing. Juicing helps you. Like, kind of, what's your, like your day to day eating? Yeah. So, I mean, um, we've been incorporating, you know, uh, fasting. Me and Russ have been incorporating fasting. So, you know, we have like a ten to sixteen hour gap. So we usually eat. Um, you know, we'll wake up at seven thirty, do our morning spiritual workout, like our spiritual practices, like meditating, yoga, or whatever. Um, you know, and then we'll start eating like at eleven thirty a.m. But we'll stop eating around seven thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that that gap to fast, you know, so fasting's really helped with like weight loss with Russ. And so we usually wake up and then you know, I will have like warm water with like, um, I put either like a fresh piece of ginger inside and let it steep for a little bit and have some of that. If I'm feeling like it, I'll have some, you know, I'll squeeze a little bit of lemon in there. Not too much because you know, the acidity. And um, yeah, so I like to incorporate like a fresh juice today i made like i just had a stock of celery juice S celery juice the the fat of celery juice is i mean it's it's a trend but it really does help it helps go if you have any type of like you know um if you have a chronic uh or or if you have any type of like blockages you know in going celery has really helped me so you know today i, I juiced um celery i had a little bit of apples today and put some fresh ginger and just had like a cup of of juice you know mm -hmm. And then if I feel like I had like a heavy meal prior, like the day before for lunch, I just make a, I just make a, a, a vegetable uh, soup. So it helps digest more, you know? So the, the meal before the day before helps digest more. It helps me go, you know? So yeah, that was my day today. Like I mentioned for lunch, I had, I just roasted some butternut squash with onions, some garlic. Garlic's really good for, you know, antioxidants, really good to help disease. Garlic is great. Um, mm -hmm. I added some, you know, fresh virgin olive oil, which is great. Olive oil is great, has omega threes and six. That's like something we definitely need to have in our in our life um, to carry to carry the, that type of good um, cell protection. That, that's what I need for my psoriasis is that cell protection. So I added that, roasted that, put some vegetables in the blender, uh, added some vegetable stock, and I just had this beautiful vegetable soup today for lunch. Um, hell yeah! I see a question: celery juice. Um, hey Isa, so great to see you. Isa's an amazing, badass, like musician, singer in Barcelona. She's all about the health and wellness also. She asks, celery juice you mentioned is celery, stems, and leaf, um, stems, and apple, and ginger. Apple juice you mentioned, yes. So I just put celery, red apples, you could do green apples. Green apples are great for juicing. They have more nutrition inside. Um, um, I used a, a, a knob of ginger. Ginger's super strong. You just use a knob of ginger. And what else did I add? Uh, apples and celery. That's it. So, you know, just, ha you know, just mix it up with whatever you have. Any greens you have at home, go ahead and add that in to the celery, you know. But, you know, if you want to make a good batch of, of celery juice, get at least two stalks, two big bunches of, of celery. Mm -hmm. That's super helpful. Yeah, the acidity in my stomach just completely calms down, you know. <laughs> So, so make that juice and then it'll be good for, you know, the, that day you make it, that's the freshest it's going to be. And then save it for the, for the next day. And then you just keep it like in a, in a bottle like this and drink it the next. And then you were talking olive oil too. Like, I know you said that, that olive oil. And I also do this, like when I eat that, that's like, I, I love just putting like olive oil versus butter just because it's like, it's it, the, the taste it almost tastes exactly the same. Which, oh, olive oil and butter. Because you said like, oh, it's like, it's like a good replacer for, for butters. Yeah. I mean, do, should I talk about oils now or do you want to talk about your health journey? No, you can talk about your oil and then we'll hop on to mine. Okay. That's so yeah. Um, so currently I'm learning about oils. Oils is important. I'm sure we use oil every single day. I mean, usually we do with cooking, you know, as a garnish for our skin. I use coconut oil on my body every day. I don't use any lotion because my skin gets so dry that I need that really thick layer. So I use that throughout the, the throughout the year. You know, I use pure organic, um, you know, cold press organic coconut oil. So that's really good. You know, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. So why not put that on your body? So I'm currently learning about oil. And I wrote some notes. Um, the healthiest oils and acids we need are the fatty acids, right? Um, the poly, polyunsaturated oils are the best. Um, omega-3 and omega-6. 
um, the two essential fatty acids that we need to get from our diets because our body does not produce that on our own. So that's why it's so super good to get that natural virgin cold pressed olive oil. And it's great because I live in Spain and I mean, we're kind of spoiled. It's like made here. So I mean, I don't get any crazy fancy olive oil, honestly. Um, I mean, I have, but it's almost like I don't, there's crazy, there's differences because olive oil here is based off region, right? The northern part of Spain, the southern part of Spain, how it's produced, it matters matters on the size of the olive oils, right? The little side, the little olives, the bigger the olive. I'm learning about all that. So, um, so because our body can't produce these type of oils, right? Omega three and omega six, which we need for cell protection, um, it's really good to also incorporate grapeseed oil. That's really good for garnishing. Um, avocado oil, walnut oil, and virgin olive oil. And it's great to swap that out into your cooking, right? But also make sure like when you're checking, when you buy the type of olive oil or the oil, make sure you could check to see if it can you use it for high temperature, medium temperature, and low temperature for grilling or frying or any of that stuff. Cause that's super important for the cellular, cellular life of the olive oil. Awesome, yeah. And, and just the fact that like there's a lot of oils that are not high heat so like olive oil is one of those oils that is in high heat so when you do use olive oil at a really high heat it actually becomes a carcinogen so it because it's it's harmful to our health so it's like always using the right oil for like the temperature that you're using is so important yeah yeah and you know incorporating like olive uh, avocado and sunflower oil are great for vitamin e so that's really great if you you know have deficiency of vitamin e such a great, great way to do that. So yeah, I mean, just being more aware, right, of the oils we use. And you know, butter is great. I mean, I am not, I'm guilty, I use butter. But you know, use butter in moderation. Obviously, that's common sense. <laughs> you know, um, if you choose butter, make sure it's from only from grass fed cow's milk. Um, and also some there's so many great options for vegan butters, right from what are some brands you use, Liz, we use me Mio Konos, Mio, 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 Mio Konos, right? Mio, Mio is a great, yeah. Uh, Mio. Foragers are great. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> Mio. Miyoko. Yes. That, Forager. She's Japanese, so you would say like how like a Japanese person would say. It's like Miyoko. She uses okay. coconut. It's made out of coconuts. And that is one of the, it's definitely a pricier uh, vegan butter, but it is one of the best vegan butters for sure in, in, in terms of taste. But also vegan butter is not that difficult to make. I haven't made it, but there's a lot of recipes on the internet of things that you can just make on your own with different oils and blending them together. And and yeah, so it's there's so many different options and alternatives. Yeah, I haven't really got, I mean, we have one um, that I we got here from Mercadona, which is like the local grocery store here in Madrid, um, that is olive oil. So it's like pretty much pressed olive oil. Um, there's also a good vegan brand forager and earth balance. I, I mean, earth balance is a great popular one too. So mm -hmm. look online, you guys, there's plenty of options. Um, <laughs> but for vegan butters, make, make sure that when you look at it, you look at the label and, and if it's trans fat, you want to be avoiding that because it's very harmful for our body and it's super best avoided. So yeah, make sure that you make sure you look at the label. Um, also a clever trick to mimic butter is take high quality virgin olive oil, put it in the freezer, put it in the refrigerator, and once it hardens, you can use that for a spread. Nice. Helpful tip. Awesome. You could probably even put like some herbs in there too and then and then freeze it and then you have that like, you know, like an herby butter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I didn't think about that too, like how it, it already just, you know, gets together with the olive oil and it just you could use it for butter. That's what I'm using now. So, you know, to use that trick would be great, you know? Yeah, it's very cool. Any questions along the way as we're talking, just drop them in, in the comments or you can use the little question tool, which is next to the comment box. Yeah. What's up, Bunny Milk? Nice to see you. We miss you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, Lizzie. So let's move on, right? So my so my my health journey is a little bit different than Laura's. Uh, I am a ethical vegan, so meaning that my my vegan diet choices are highly tied to like my values. But really, how I became uh, let's say like plant based is eleven years ago. It's now been eleven years. This summer, I hit eleven years as a vegetarian. And eleven years ago, I was hospitalized. I had some health issues, and I needed to get a surgery. And I was in the hospital and I had already been a failed vegetarian for two years. Like I knew that being vegetarian was, 
was like what I needed to do because I loved animals so much. But I hadn't realized that vegetarianism would also help my health. So I was at the hospital and I spent Thanksgiving there and I was there for like four days. And it was really hard to be there. Like my, I told my, my parents to leave. I stayed there by myself most of the time. And just seeing every, there was a lot of older people that were sick and everyone coughing and just really having that epiphany that, dang, if I don't eat the right things now, like when I'm 80, I'm, my body's not going to be right. So at that moment, after having failed being a vegetarian for two years, I said to myself, I was like, after this, like, that's it. Like, I'm going, like, I'm doing vegetables. Vegetables are going to be, like, my diet. It just, you know, meat is, is harmful for our body. Our body takes a long time to digest it, to break it down. It causes heart disease. It causes cholesterol. I didn't want to deal with any of those things. So switching my diet over to a vegetarian diet would help me hopefully you know protect my health from some of those things that could occur and so that happened yeah now 11 years ago and then little by little i learned more and more can you hear that it's like a loud helicopter no okay. it's okay little by little i learned more and more and once i adopted my vegetarian diet for health reasons right because at that point I loved animals, but it was really for, it was really like driven by health and really wanting to be healthy. And that first year that I went vegetarian was like my healthiest year ever. It was like, I was eating all vegetables. It was like, my body was really shining. I didn't used to use the, the, you know, TMI, but I didn't used to use the restroom, like, you know, for number two, like every day. Like I didn't, I didn't do that. Like maybe I would use the bathroom like twice a week. And I never know that that was not, correct or not normal you know until like I started going vegetarian I realized that damn the food was running through my body so much faster and it actually really helped me you know just um what's it called like get get my like bowels like to move regularly and so that was one of my, my biggest like health differences but the second biggest health difference was like my energy levels people think that when you go vegetarian or you or you skip out or you eat more vegetables you're not eating meat that you will be you know you won't have that much energy and that might be true for some people because who knows what's going on with your body but typically what you feel is a, a, a an increase of energy and so my energy was through the roof and it like skyrocketed i had wow. energy, energy that i did not have before Wow. That's amazing. So how did you how did you learn about what what proper plants and what vegetables to eat? You know, I, I mean, just following just following what what we need to eat, really, you know, it's vegetables. And so I really prioritize whole food, like plant based whole foods, you know, it's I, I do eat like the mock meats, like I'll eat like those things. But those I, those are not a big part of my diet. Those things I consider them as treats. You know, like the Beyond Burgers and like all of like the, the sausages and all that stuff. Like those foods should not be a, a, a pivotal part of your diet if you're a vegetarian or plant-based. Those should be considered like just treats because they're still processed. And oh, yeah. Food, like high health is high vibrational foods, which is living foods like vegetables. Like, you know, like... But yeah, what's your favorite? What, where do you, what are you currently growing in your backyard? So I grow, I, right now I'm not growing too much. It's just, it's this, it's kind of like a dormant period, but um, I typically grow kale, zucchini, eggplant. Um, I have a bunch of herbs, but those are like my big veggies that I grow. Kale, zucchini, and eggplant, because those are just things that I use really, really often. So you really want to just consider, you know, you want to ask yourself, like, what are the foods that you really like? to eat and then and then try to like create foods around that but vegetables it should be such a high a high part of like of, of your plate when you're like sitting down vegetables should be first and then whatever extra protein you want to add you can add but really prioritizing like you know the the, the green living foods yeah, yeah. i love that yeah yes. I really just did it when I was transitioning. I did it on what I liked, you know, like I loved avocados. Like I loved, I loved like eating like salads. So I did eat a lot of salads in the beginning. And then I started, and then I started like seeing like, all right, what, what, what foods can I veganize? What dishes do I love that I can like make vegan? And, and it became really easy to eat lentils and like love eating black beans. And you know, what else do I eat here? Like you can yes. eat pastas. And yeah. Then, Things that you can do that don't don't center around like eating meat, and yeah. it's perfect to be like, all right, well, you know, cutting meat if that doesn't work for you, it's just about incorporating more vegetables into your diet every day. 
and yeah. that, that means to you, you know, like really being like, all right, I didn't eat any vegetables today. What can I reach for? You know, can I just make myself a kale salad? Can I make myself like some sort of like little bruschetta, like tomato and onion, just sort of something to just kind of like give you those extra nutrients? Because even yeah. with you could take vitamins and we were going to get a lot of nutrients from that but where you're going to get the most nutrients from is like these vegetables as you're eating them letting your body like really digest it the natural way that it's like meant to be yeah yeah i love that <laughs> that's so cool yeah i mean liz is such a gangster i mean she's so when i lived with liz for so i mean for a few years she was making her own ve vegan cheese and it's a freaking process like you're a gangster for making your own cheese like just to buy vegan cheese in the States is like $15, you know, even even vegan cheese here is like 15 euros, you know, and that's pricey to make your own cheese. So tell us, tell me, can you quickly tell people how you made your own vegan cheese? Yeah, so we, and we should do maybe like a little live where we make some like vegan cheese or something. But I use a lot of cashews, like cashews are a great source of like cashews, great for pastas. pastas. Yeah, great. <laughs> like you know I even throw cashews like in my stir fries like when I'm making like some veggies in the oven and like yeah. the flavor like when when they kind of like get browned a bit but I make my cat I make my cashew cheese with cashews um you can also make cheese with like with tofu you can make cheese with macadamia nuts I actually have my favorite cookbook it's the vegan cheese cookbook and this has so many amazing cheese recipes because vegan cheese can be expensive and vegan food can be expensive right but that's when you're going into that food that's like the processed foods if you're if what you're doing is prioritizing like like vegetables then your vegan diet or your vegetarian diet won't be that expensive but if all you're doing is buying like the beyond meats and like the other things it's like you're gonna have you're gonna be spending a lot because those those particular products can be expensive so for the price of one vegan cheese that's like 15 dollars, i i can make three that's so badass <laughs> there's money because like it does take time i gotta soak the cashews for eight hours then i gotta blend them i gotta throw in all the things then i gotta like let it sit and like um form itself in my fridge so it takes time time's money but if you got the time might as well why not we still yeah do at home and kind of you know yeah. well go at it yeah i mean or try it on a sunday you know speaking of books um i actually really love this book the veggie um veg by jamie oliver it's such a great book for like just amazing dishes for ve if you want to start going vegetarian or vegan um i mean everything looks so delicious on here and what i really love about it is that they have all the beneficial like types of vinegars how to make your own vinegars um how to make your own cheeses like it's really really interesting how to use fresh herbs dried herbs you know flavored salt salts and stuff like that so get that book the what the vegan cheese book what's that one called um, this is it's just called vegan cheese by jewels uh or a r o n aron okay cool and the jamie oliver veg i really this is like the one book i got when i moved to madrid <laughs> yeah so books books i mean duh. i mean, I mean uh, sometimes i never really go off the recipe but um you know i just try to use what i have the recipe is a great base because like really we all of us have very specific taste buds and our taste buds are changing like every every month right so it's like yeah. might as well like start with the base of the recipe and then and then you just like add from there you add more lemon you add a little bit more like pepper whatever it is that like you like it and what i like to do too is I like to like make notes of my of my modifications so that like I don't have to be like wait why do, I don't like this recipe again that way it's like I know oh yeah that's right I like doubled up on the coconut oil yeah damn that's such a good tip yeah, yeah. so back to you Lauren now that we talked a little bit about my health journey we'll go back to you and talking about eating healthy while being like in a relationship like what's it in Spain that navigating healthy living and like with your partner um yeah um i i love i love eating in spain so far i do feel like my i haven't been sick since i moved here like i had some a few digestive issues but i really think it was from something i actually ate like a processed meat or processed food but i actually haven't got sick it was just crazy because i always to always get sick and living in la and probably because I was a lot, I was probably around a lot of people that had germs or I don't know what the heck, but like what's even cool about living in Spain is like the, even the high end produce is like really cheap here. It's crazy. Like, 
even like vegetables like are so cheap and it's just it's crazy like i'm just not used to that and so we do go really hard on buying fruits and vegetables like you know and there's little stalls everywhere it's not like you go to one grocer it's like you know there's the fruiteria and then there's the you know the vegetable place and then there's the fishmonger so it's like even when you're walking home you're like okay i'm craving like you know this plum or a mango or a melon and it's like it's it's great it's great yes um Okay, so quickly, I wanted to uh, uh, respond to Issa's question uh, about Manuka honey. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually haven't got into the Manuka honey fad. I'm sure it has super beneficial, like, things for your immune system. But, I mean, Liz is against honey. <laughs> yeah, yes, but I, but I know oh, that yes. I, I wish that there was something that existed that was, like, honey that, you know, didn't come from, like, the bees. But I know that honey does have – the health benefits of honey are – are like unmatched you know like they they do beautiful things for animals so i i mean for animals for for like for our skin not for animals but like for for like us for our skin for our body but what i what i was going to say that if when you are purchasing honey if what you can do is just confirm that it's from a from like a you know a, a farm that's like that has like their bees in mind that's always the best way to go that way like you know that you're supporting like a system that's like okay aren't like harming the bees and then and then you can still you know reap those benefits of, of, of the bees if you'd like to do that yeah i mean yeah bee pollen manuka honey i heard that's all really beneficial for like people to use when they're sick i mean in your natural like smoothies or food, uh, breakfast bowls all that stuff so yeah make sure it's sustainably sustainably sourced that's number one i i, I definitely agree yeah, um, sustainable. and like yeah all that stuff you don't and want no angry bees making our honey <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Another, they're like, yeah. Oh, they're like, I know there's, the, I know, poor little bees. They're amazing. And also, bees are so crucial to like our, 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 basically our love. If bees did not exist and they weren't out pollinating, we would not be here. And neither would the cows, neither would, it's like, you know, it's, yeah, we'd all have a dry desert, basically. Everything. So we had another question too um, some easy, veggie friendly recipes for you know for someone that doesn't have as much time our friend here said she has a family and she just needs quick easy recipes that are like you know easy to put together and i think one of those things that's like good because it's i know that once you have a family you're just running around and running around but i think it's good to like try to like prep it a little bit right like so like meal prep a bit and one of like my one of my meals that i think is like quick and easy it's just like a like a nice tasty hearty vegetable so like on top of quinoa, on top of, on top of like brown rice, like whatever you want as like the base of it, but then just roasting a bunch of vegetables like zucchini, sweet potato, cauliflower, uh, you know, russet potatoes, just roasting a bunch of them and then putting them in the fridge. And then you can just create a bunch of bowls throughout the week. And then you can just like uh, put some tahini dressing on top. And that's like a nice, really easy, quick way to just like have something already in the fridge but that tastes like delicious. Even if it's like chili, the vegetables like still taste like amazing. But if you want, you can warm them up again, but it's like just doing like those nice hearty bowls are perfect. And you can also do variety too. So on your bowl, if you want, you can one day maybe put some sauerkraut on top. The sauerkraut has really, really healthy my, um, micro microorganisms and it's fermented so it gives you like some nice health there put some some sauerkraut on top i love that you can make like some kimchi put some of that on top just get creative with the bowls but i think bowls are the way to go when it comes to like quick quick foods that you can yeah like I love that. Yeah. And if you don't have time, I would suggest, you know, taking learning how to meal prep, um, you know, meal prep um, on Sundays, you know, and if you don't have time to meal prep, you know, just create some really healthy grains, right? Um, you know, healthy grains, like you could create, like, just have a side of brown rice, cook that on Sunday, have a side of quinoa, have that ready. Um, you know, just really good grains that are just really healthy for you. And then you could just add anything you want, whether it's like a protein or fish or tofu on top throughout the week. So you're not taking that time to like make that other side of the dish, you know, so just making sure that you have those healthy things like packed to the side or, you know, also for snacking. Um, what I really love to do is to, like pre cut all your stuff, like pre cut your, your carrots for snacking instead of grabbing like, you know, the bag of chips or like, you know, the bread or whatever, just have that stuff accessible. So it's super easy to like eat, whether it be, you know, raw bell peppers, um, raw carrots, um, raw um, radishes, radishes are really great to snack on also. So, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love that. I'll love that stuff. So I mean, that's very helpful to, you know, help not just with meals, but for snacking also. It's a cute little tip. 
-hmm. <laughs> yes, lentils are great. Yes, lentils are awesome. We love lentils. I, I definitely yeah. want to make some lentils this week. Uh, lentils? <laughs> no, I used to hate lentils. And then growing up, I was like 10 years old and I went to Colombia to visit my aunt. And she was like, you should eat lentils. I, like, I don't like them. And she's like, well, you know, if you eat lentils, your boobs will grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, so what? By eating all the lentils. That's I don't so funny. Because Liz's boobs are actually really big. So maybe it worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, lentils are popping here. People love to eat lentils in Spain. It's like lentils and they'll they're like um they usually they usually marinate it for a long time with like tomatoes and carrots, but they usually get it from like the sausages. So the the sausages like kind of create that savory flavor within the the within the the sauciness of the lentils, so it's like a little bit soupy and stuff like that. But that's a big thing that big thing here. Um so Laura, tell us about so Russ, Russ is like yeah. He's not pescatarian. Do you also like, what do you cook for him? What's it like, you know, navigating like, you know, him? Yeah. yeah. So my partner is a freaking Scorpio. So he's super in his ways. Will be super happy just eating chicken, broccoli, rice for the rest of his life. So <laughs> as he got, he had this epiphany during COVID and was like, uh, everyone's calling me fat. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be super crazy on my diet. So now he counts his calories. He's super into, um, you know, eating greens, getting his protein, you know, in and work, he works out crazy. So, but not just that, I, um, you know, I try to in incorpor incorporate like soy alternatives, uh, ordering, getting seitan, you know, making delicious salads for him. So he's in more inspired to eat more greens. So, um, now he's inspired. He makes his own salads. Before he used to just, you know, have that simple bread and, and maybe chicken and pollo and all that stuff. But now since like, um, I don't know, he's just more, he's more aware of his diet. I try to incorporate like, hey, you can get protein from soy. You know, you can get protein from seitan. You can get your protein from beans, you know, black beans, um, certain things like that. So I think we're easing into more eating more vegetables like throughout the week, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And for sure, that's, that's, yeah, just incorporating all the different things is great. And then so you're a pescatarian, and then you converted like from from like your childhood. What are some of those recipes that like that you that you converted or just like have fun with now? Yeah, um, air fryer is I mean, if you don't have an air fryer, like you guys got to get one. I mean, kind of not really. I mean, we use it, but we kind of don't use it. It's great for like, frying sweet potatoes, french fries, anything that you kind of want to fry that don't you don't want to immerse in oil, right? Any type of like, uh, let's say like corn oil, or, you know, vegetable oil, all that stuff. So what I do now is I go to the local fishmonger and I get a really good like fresh white fish that sources really well. Um, you know, either, whether it be marlutha, like could be like a cod type of fish. And um, I usually bread it in like panko flakes, like Japanese panko fl flakes um uh coat it in there and i put it in my air fryer and it basically becomes like american style fish sticks but a healthier version because it's not deep fried it's a bit healthier and it's satisfied it's really satisfies my inner cravings for child like childhood memories like mm -hmm. that type of just like you know yeah <laughs> that's, that's what i do too so that's what i do now so is there any um any recipes that you do right now for that kind of craves your your child your childlike hunger Oh man, I don't know. Everything is like so for me. What I eat, it's 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 always so like day to day, like what I'm really craving. I'm just right. super, and I think that that's like a good note to talk about. Just being in tune, like with your body. The more you're in tune with your body, the more you start realizing what your body's asking you for, and like what you may need, like on one particular day. So if there's like a day that I really really want like kale or something. I'm going to try to eat kale because it's like, if my body's craving it, it's probably because my body needs some sort of nutrients or vitamins that are within that kale that are going to help me. And so that, that's one of, so I, I, I try to be proactive with that. Uh, oh, you know, but one of the things that like I'm loving right now is like, Chris makes this really, really amazing curry ramen and it's so good. And it's just like, no. like, I grew up eating soup every day. Like every day there was soup at my house. I was always eating soup. So like, I love soup. So he's making like this amazing vegan curry. That's so, so bomb. And I can share the, the I'll share the recipe with you guys in, um, in the comments to this particular post once we post it after we're live. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I was thinking about that. I was like, I have some rice noodles 
in my refrigerator and I had leftover curry and I was like, I should put both those together. But yeah, but I'm gonna try your 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 recipe. So that's oh. great. Well, it's like it's a it's a sweet simple vegan recipe but i just like i just forward recipes i just know all the different recipes that i'm like that i like love <laughs> <laughs> that's cool um okay so you are like a, a diehard vegan and i applaud you for that and you're so great at like just pushing that lifestyle and leading with an example and we love you for that you know it's great um so could you give us some tips if anyone that wants to convert being a vegan or just incorporate more a plant like plant like diet like can you give us some tips yeah definitely i think first it is it, trying new things right like trying the vegetables that you haven't really like been into giving it a second shot and maybe even allowing yourself to like your taste buds are going to change right so as you start eating like more vegetables your taste buds will actually like morph and what you might what you didn't like at the beginning of the month by day 30 you might be like damn i love like green peppers like they taste they have such a good taste and it's just because your taste buds are going to change that's so exactly that's exactly what happened to Russ. he's like i hate spinach and now he eats spinach yeah. <laughs> he's like oh soy Ugh. he's like now he eats soy it's crazy it's like you you you, you adapt you know like you start eating yeah. He didn't, he didn't used to like green juices and like now he, he loves green juice. Like it's like something that like he, the taste is like good. Yeah. So that's, like, I know you might not like certain vegetables from like past, from childhood, but give it another shot. Try it again and try it again. Try it three times. Sometimes it takes three times for someone to like actually start to like something or to just like be okay with it. And then you just untap a whole new world of vegetables and fruits that you'll like love. Yeah, so try. So try, keep trying, quit, and try again. <laughs> quit and try again, try it again. Um, yeah, I love uh, that. Yeah, I have, like, a whole, like, how to go, like, vegetarian or plant-based or vegan, like, on our website on plantlikethings.com. So definitely if you guys want really specific tips, go there. But some more yeah. tips are, let's see, one of my other big tips is always, like, do it at a pace, you know? It's, like, if you want to, like, incorporate more vegetables into, like, your diet – if you want to just go cold turkey and be like, you know what, next week, I'm just going to eat all vegetables. And you're a person that cold turkey works for you. Amazing. Do that, you know, but for yeah. every, some people, cold turkey and just going all in doesn't work. That didn't work for me. And that's why I said that I was a failed vegetarian for two years. For two years, I tried to be vegetarian and I just couldn't, I would go back. I'd be like, oh, I really miss chicken wings. And I'd fall back into it. Chicken wings. <laughs> and then I would start all over again. Yeah. And so it's like, and the reason why was because I was trying to do it cold turkey. I kept trying yeah. to do like it all at once, but I'm not that type of person. So understanding what type of person you are and adapting like your goal to who you are. Now, not, don't do what I say. Don't do what Laura says, like figure out what's going to work for you based on what our recommendations are and, and then, and then doing it that way. So for me, when I went vegetarian, I did it in phases. Like my first phase was I cut out like chicken. The next phase was that I cut out like two months later, I cut out red meat. And then a year later, a year and a half later, I cut out fish. So it was a path, you know, but it was like, it was my path and it's what worked for me. So just find, find what works, what will and what works for you. Yeah, that's great. I, I love that too. And also I think it'd be great to also like, um, I've been kind of logging what I've been eating you know, just so I can not like beat myself up, like, oh man, I didn't like eat good today. But you know, just writing down like, hey, but Monday, I did eat all vegetables. So just like, maybe creating like a habit tracker on like a little notepad or a piece of scrap paper on the side of your bed and being like, all right, just incorporate eating more vegetables Monday, Monday through Friday. I'm just like, hey, did I eat vegetables today? I might just check it off, you know, so I just feel like creating those habits of just trying to just incorporate more you know of just like that greener lifestyle I think would be helpful instead of just you know mm -hmm. yeah because Laura and I so I'm I'm a vegan and Laura is pescatarian and even though we have different like food lifestyles and and what we're talking about are, are two different topics because that's what works for Laura and that's what works for, for this is what works for me it's like everyone's body is so different yeah. Don't ridiculous standards of perfection real figure out what is gonna like what works for your body and how you feel the best how does your body feel the best like how do your how do your bones feel the best like how do your muscles and go with that because that is like that's what's going to be like best for you and just yeah. really into that so but both even though laura and i are different we have different diets the big thing is 
vegetables like vegetables is like is the key it's like even laura is saying it too it's like that's that's kind of like the the way to to be to be healthy yeah and so i mean being vegan is is hard right so but also i had a question for you like how do you deal with like families that criticize your eating choices yeah. you know it's, you know, it's like little by little, you start to learn how to like advocate for like yourself. It's difficult in the beginning. People will question you and like, they'll say stupid things or they'll say like mean things or they won't understand, you know, but little as, as you develop like your understanding of why you're really doing this and like, and you can tell them like how you feel, like how, how it makes you feel, like why, why it is that like, that this particular lifestyle change is like, is important to you. And that's how you kind of like advocate to them and just be like, you know, well, I understand that, you know, you might not understand, but this is what works for me. It's like my body feels great. Like for me, it's like, dude, my body feels great. I am able to maintain like a weight without, I mean, this is obviously specific to me. I don't work out, you know, and, and I maintain like my weight. And I do think that a, p a portion of that is because of the food that I eat. It's also hereditary that like, you know, I come from like a family that has fast metabolisms, whatever. But because of my vegetarian diet, I'm able to like keep like my, the weight that I'm supposed to be at. And, and that's like, and that's always one of the things that I tell people. It's like, you know, I feel my best. I feel great. And that's, and this is why like I do that. And then beyond that, like for me, it's like the animal stuff. I always, I use it as opportunity to advocate for animals. Where, again, it's like, I am vegan, vegetarian for the animals, the planet, my health and the health of other individuals as well. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I mean, uh, last weekend, we ate with our friends and we had some really good vegan burgers. And I was like, Oh, you know what, just to just like, I was like telling Russ, like, Oh, we, we didn't eat any like animal products to this, this today. It's like, you know, just give the animals a break. Yeah. <laughs> you know, give them a break, give the you know, the agriculture and all and, and all this, like, you know, just give the animals a break. Just give yeah. them a break, it, you know, three days of the week, we'd all do that. And one of the encourage your family or your friends to eat healthy and this is something that laura does a lot of is cooking for them and hosting them at your house and making them a meal and making them realize that damn this is really super delicious and leading by that example is like is is i think one of the best ways to like just ad advocate for like healthier eating yeah yeah i do love that that's great i mean cooking for others you know um you have so many good recipes like i love like the seven layer dip you guys have i miss that you guys, you oh, guys yeah. Woo! That seven layer dip is amazing. Um, can you tell people about your seven layer dip really quick? Dude, the the dip like it's it's like it's a Chris and me collab, and it's basically just like a dip like full of every layer is like is like is a layer, right? Or it's like so it'll be like beans, it'll be like the like the lettuce, peppers, um, uh, like a salsa, um, so many different things. I can't even like Chris would yeah, I, I but you put. You put soy to uh, soy uh, uh, tofu. Um, you make your own tofu uh, sour cream. Own tofu sour cream and and yeah, there's I mean there's so many things you can make. You can make your own like mayo. You can make your own sour cream. And the sour cream I make with with, um, with a softer tofu in the blender with some olive oil, garlic. Uh, agave, lime, and cilantro, and it's so tasty. And it's so much cheaper than buying and then I, I make double the amount and I just have as much as I want because I love sauce so I'm like give me all the sauce <laughs> yeah condiments are life for <laughs> sure all right guys well I think you guys got a good round of you know just some really healthy lifestyle tips encouragement for going vegetarian vegan and some really good books that we like to use you know going forward with eating vegetarian so yeah yeah, well, thanks so, so much, you guys, for tuning in. Next week, we'll, we'll be talking about some other amazing topic that we'll let you guys know. Uh, the Conscious Kitchen Live is now called The Conscious Tea. So welcome to The Conscious Tea, and tune in next Wednesday at 11 a.m. again. Yeah, we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Leave us a review on our podcast. It helps us, like, grow and just grow globally. So you can check that out on um, Apple. And if you have a hot tip, We'd love for you to leave a hot tip for us, like hack, life hack, recipes, uh, hack, a hack for like your phone, whatever you have, a, a life tip. Go yeah. ahead and email it to us at hello.consciouskitchen at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail like through your phone and drop us a little voice note and add your Instagram tag and we'll go ahead and add you to our podcast. So we get about a thousand listeners every podcast. So 
go ahead and drop us a hot tip. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's such a fun way to just get people involved and to just get, you know, these freaking life tips from all the people that are out there listening to, to the podcast and then, and then sharing all that. So it's great. Yeah, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>